what the Boeing 747 hump was really for. The Boeing 747 is one of the most iconic airplanes in the world. It's massive, powerful, and has been a symbol of long distance air travel for more than 50 years. But there's one thing that makes it instantly recognizable, even to someone who's never flown before, that weird hump on top of its nose. You've seen it, that odd upper bump right above the cockpit area. It almost looks like a second floor slapped onto the front. And yeah, technically it is a second level, but why does it even exist? Most people assume it was added for extra seats or maybe for luxury suites, but that's not how the story goes. The real reason for the hump is a lot more practical and honestly, kind of genius. Let's rewind to the 1960s. Commercial air travel was exploding. Airlines wanted to carry more passengers faster and farther. The Boeing 707 was the king at the time, but it maxed out around 180 people. That wasn't enough. Airports were filling up and airlines were hungry for something bigger. So Boeing stepped in with a wild proposal, a jet that could carry over 400 passengers in a single flight. That was unheard of. They called it the 747, and the world had never seen anything like it. With four massive engines, a double aisle body, and a wingspan wider than a football field, it would be the largest commercial aircraft ever built. But even while designing this passenger plane, Boeing had something else in mind. You see, at that time, the US government was betting big on supersonic jets. Everyone thought the future of flying would be ultra-fast planes like the Concorde. Boeing was even working on their own version, the 2707. Because of that, Boeing assumed that passenger airlines might only use the 747 for a few years before moving on to faster aircraft. So, they made a plan B. What if the 747 could be easily converted into a cargo jet? That's where things got interesting. Cargo aircraft need to be loaded quickly and efficiently. And the best way to do that? Through the nose. Boeing wanted the entire nose of the 747 to swing open, allowing bulky cargo to be loaded straight in. But there was a problem. The cockpit is usually placed in the very front of an aircraft, right in the nose. But if the nose was going to swing open for cargo, you couldn't have pilots sitting there. Boeing needed to move the cockpit somewhere else without redesigning the whole aircraft. Their solution? Move the cockpit upstairs. That created the now famous hump. Not for style, not for prestige. Simply because it was the only way to make the swing nose cargo door work. It was a bold move, but it solved the problem perfectly. The cockpit was safely out of the way and the nose could open freely for cargo. This design wasn't about looks, it was about function. Boeing needed a practical solution, and moving the cockpit upstairs was it. No frills, just smart engineering. And just like that, the 747 got its most famous feature, an upper deck that made history, all because of a cargo loading challenge. Now, here's where things took an unexpected turn. That little upstairs bump, originally just for the cockpit, created a small extra space right behind the flight deck. Airlines looked at it and said, why not make it a lounge? And so, in the early days of the 747, many airlines added spiral staircases that led up to luxurious bars, lounges, and even piano lounges in the upper deck. It was the golden age of air travel. Passengers dressed in their finest, sipped cocktails mid-flight, and enjoyed a level of comfort rarely seen today. The upper deck became a place of glamour and exclusivity, all thanks to a quirk of cargo design. Later on, as the industry shifted toward efficiency and squeezing in more paying passengers, that upper lounge gradually disappeared. Airlines realized they could turn that space into premium seating, usually business or first class, and make more money. Lounges gave way to lie flat seats, fine dining, and high-end service. Still luxurious, but with a different focus. But it's funny when you think about it. The most luxurious part of the plane, the iconic upper deck, didn't come from a desire for comfort or elegance. It came from a purely functional design decision, meant to load cargo through the nose. And while the passenger side of the story gets all the attention, the 747's real legacy might actually be in freight. The cargo version of the plane, called the 747F, is still one of the best freighters in the world. Thanks to that swing nose and raised cockpit, it can load items that no other plane can. Massive generators, wind turbine blades, entire trucks, you name it. 
The design that made the 747 iconic in passenger travel turned out to be a game changer in cargo. During COVID-19, 747 freighters were flying PPE, vaccines, and ventilators across the globe. When other planes were grounded, these giants kept going. Their ability to carry enormous loads, travel long distances, and operate under tough conditions made them essential in a global crisis. They became lifelines when the world needed them most. In fact, many 747S that started as passenger jets have been converted into freighters because their design is just too good to waste. Airlines and cargo operators saw the value in repurposing them instead of retiring them. That swing nose born from a simple cargo loading solution gave the 747 a second life. And for many, that might be the aircraft's greatest and longest lasting contribution to aviation. NASA even used the 747 for one of its most epic missions. Ever heard of the shuttle carrier aircraft? That was a modified Boeing 747 used to carry the space shuttle on its back. They took out a huge chunk of the upper deck, reinforced the body, and added mounting struts. Then they literally strapped the shuttle on top and flew it around the US, and it worked, flawlessly. The military got in on it too. The US Air Force converted 747S into airborne command centers, nicknamed the Doomsday Planes. These are flying bunkers built to keep the government running in case of a nuclear war. They're shielded against electromagnetic pulses, carry sophisticated communication systems, and can stay in the air for days with aerial refueling. All of this was possible because of the 747's huge size, strength, and clever design. And yes, the raised cockpit and clear nose area played a part in that flexibility. Now, Boeing didn't stop with just one version. The 747 family kept evolving. There was the 747-100, the original. Then came the minus 200 with better engines. The minus 300 followed with a stretched upper deck, but the 747, 400, that one became a global favorite with winglets, better fuel economy, a digital glass cockpit, and seating for over 400 people, it became the backbone of long haul routes for decades. You could fly nonstop from London to Tokyo or New York to Hong Kong. Then came the final version, the 747-8. It's the largest 747 ever, with an extended upper deck, new generation engines, and better fuel efficiency. It's also one of the quietest large aircraft ever built. Lufthansa, Korean Air, and a few other airlines still fly the passenger version. And just like that, the design that began in the 60s is still doing its job more than 50 years later. But let's be real, newer planes are taking over dot twin dash engine jets like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and Airbus A350 are more efficient. They burn less fuel, require less maintenance, and don't need four engines to cross oceans. Technology has advanced, and the aviation industry has moved toward leaner, greener, and more cost-effective solutions. Airlines have slowly started retiring their 747S. British Airways, Qantas, United, and even Delta have all said goodbye to the queen of the skies. The plane that once ruled international skies with its double-decker elegance and unmatched size is now being phased out in favor of sleeker, more economical aircraft. In 2023, Boeing delivered the very last 747 ever made to Atlas Air, a freighter, fittingly. After more than five decades of production, the final 747 rolled out of the factory, closing the chapter on one of aviation's most iconic designs. It wasn't a passenger jet, but a cargo plane, reflecting where the 747 found its true longevity. It marked the end of an era, the humpback giant that changed the world of air travel, both for people and packages, took its final bow. But even in retirement, its legacy continues to shape the skies and the industry it helped revolutionize. Still, the 747 refuses to vanish completely. Cargo companies love it. Aviation geeks love it. Even countries love it. Air Force One, the presidential aircraft of the United States, is a customized 747. And the next version of Air Force One, also a 747. When a plane is good enough to fly the leader of the free world, you know it's something special. And let's not forget the thousands of retired 747S now serving as park donors, museums, and even restaurants and hotels. In Sweden, there's a full 747 converted into a hostel, complete 
complete with beds in the cockpit and wings as viewing platforms. All of this started because Boeing needed to make room for a cargo door. They could have gone with a completely different design, but instead, they took a chance, moved the cockpit up top, and unintentionally created a flying legend. The hump wasn't supposed to be famous. It wasn't meant to be stylish or iconic. It was a purely functional choice, a solution to a cargo problem, but it became all of that and more. That unusual design turned into one of the most recognizable shapes in aviation history. It became a symbol of international travel, engineering brilliance, and the golden age of aviation. From lounges and piano bars to critical medical cargo, the 747's hump saw it all. It told a story of bold decisions, smart design, and how necessity can sometimes create something truly unforgettable. So next time you see that recognizable bump on the front of a 747, remember, it's not just a hump. It's history, practicality, and innovation all rolled into one. A simple fix that changed the skies forever. What do you think? Should Boeing bring back the hump in future planes? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and hit subscribe for more incredible aviation stories.